Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Behind me is a P1S from Bamboo Labs. It's a 3D printer, 256 millimeter cubed build capacity. And in this video, I wanna answer three questions. Two of them are easy. One of them I'm gonna try and convince you of. First question, do you need a 3D printer? No, you don't. Second question, are they fun to have? Meh, they're fun. The third, are they practical? Let's find out. Now, I got my very first piece of digital fabrication, like, like tool, six months ago or so. I got a laser etcher, and in a video I did, I had mentioned that that etcher might be the gateway drug into digital fabrication, and that is proving to be correct. My shop is well equipped with tools. I've got a metal lathe back there, milling machine. I've got welders. I've got an entire woodworking area. And I've never felt a need to get into digital fabrication because I can just do it the old school way. Most often, I'll skip the whole stage of doing drawings or sketches, and I just start building. Get the materials, build it. So why then would I ever consider getting a 3D printer? Well, I've been wondering about them for a very long time, but I've always wondered, like, is it just to make little toys, keychains, or is there actually practical applications for a 3D printer? I'm learning that there definitely are. I will share some of these with you now. This is my Milwaukee track saw. Really like this thing, does a fantastic job. The dust collection was okay, but this slot here, this kind of prevented some of the suction from down here and was wasted. So I used to just put masking tape over here and that really improved it. I jumped onto Thingiverse or Printables, I forget which one, and somebody had this file. Pop it in here. Line that up, tighten it up, and I've got a dust shield, just like that. Tool organization is a, is a theme in this shop as of late. Put it in this big French cleat wall, and I want all my tools to be ready to go. This is my Milwaukee pin nailer and I 3D printed that tool holder. So now, it sits right there. I'm not worried about this falling off this French cleat shelf. I can move the French cleat wherever I want, but it's not going anywhere. My jigsaw, handy tool to have. I didn't want blades just strewn about, so I 3D printed a blade holder, screwed it onto the shelf for the French cleat. I can move that wherever I want. But wait, there's more. Order within the next five minutes and we'll include two doohickeys. Yeah, I feel like I'm trying to sell this to you guys. Experimenting with 3D printing for my uh, sanding blocks, my knife maker sanding blocks. I need to do a little more fill on this design, but you know, I could print these 10 at a time, sell them for a fraction of what the aluminum cost, and I think they'll hold up just fine. I obviously need to use this one for quite a while. I wanna make sure it's gonna last, but man, Again, more Milwaukee tool holders. Print these suckers off, as many as you want, put them wherever you want. Keep your tools organized. Look at that, it's amazing. You can even print battery holders, but I have a lot. Paid a fortune for this, it's a packout system. Speaking of the packout system, check this out. Packout cleats, I can mount this to the wall and hang out my packout boxes. You know those like gallon metal cans, like these, but the, the ones that have four times the amount? We'll buy the big ones and I want to pour it into the small ones, but I lose a third of the contents when I try to do that. Just on Instagram the other day, Derek Melton shared a file that he had found and it's a spout. You can 3D print a spout. And these threads even work. They work very well. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the different plastics you use have different limitations. One concern people would have is that Acetone, lacquer thinner eats plastic. That's why it comes in a metal can. Isn't it just gonna disintegrate this? Well, I've used this one once. I rinsed it out immediately with water and I haven't had it, it hasn't broken down at all. I've heard folks that have had like 10 uses out of these and if they do start to break down, just print a new one. Derek had mentioned that they should sell metal ones for that and I agree 100%, but check that out. If you can't find something on a website like Printables or Thingiverse, you can start designing your own and this has been surprisingly easy. I've been shocked at how quickly I've been able to pick up digital design. And I thought I, thought I was like so far left behind that I could never come back. I thought I was like, whew, I was gone forever. I would never do digital design. Start out with something small and easy. This is my sandblast cabinet from Princess Auto. And what I would previously do is just set this hose of my vacuum in there and it worked okay, but I always had a little bit coming out here ending up on the floor. Took a couple quick measurements, probably about half an hour print. Check this out. Whoops, put it on the right way, but look at that fit. 
Boom. Put this in there. Since this is tapered, I didn't have to do anything on the inside bore. Now I've got a nice tight connection. And since there are about 7,482 different combinations to get these adapters in, it's actually quicker just to build your own than to try to find one in a store somewhere. I have an upcoming project where I'm going to make a Texas style offset smoker. This old air compressor tank is gonna be the basis for it. And when I cut the lid, I wanna have nice radius corners. I'll show you what I'm gonna make. I need you to visualize something. So I'm gonna design a plasma cutter template Probably won't be that big, but just imagine that this is one inch thick. Okay, so we draw this, we'll extrude it. We're gonna put a little recess in here and that'll be about a 16th of an inch thick. Then I can take one of these mag switches, put it in there, put it on the tank, lock it down, which would actually be this way. And now this thing is gonna stay very rigidly locked. I can come in here with my torch, cut out a perfect radius with my plasma torch. Boom. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, 3D printed, I've 3D modeled some of the knives that I make. Amazing. This one broke, the edge broke, but not only do I have a 3D model of a knife I make, is it I could actually send this out now and get these cut up if I'd wanted to. Another thing related to knife making, your own belt clips. You can custom match the hole spacing, perfect. This one broke, I need to experiment with a different material. So this isn't a full solution yet, but just to be able to design these things, proof of concept, I mean, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Here's one that's kind of silly, but kind of cool. Little flashlight, little clip. Flashlight goes in the clip, clip goes on your glasses. This one I just printed for fun. Hey, check that out, grinding knives. I've got a light there all the time, and it looks cool. There's nothing dorky about this at all. Sweet. Something mildly useless, a guitar pick clip. You put your guitar pick in there, put this on the keychain, and you've always got a guitar pick with you. You can always strum a tune. Organization seems to be a strong suit for 3D printable items. Here's a broom holder. So we've got this geared wheel in here that actually stays in there because of the groove. You have to put it in up at the top. But once it's in, it's not going anywhere. And all you do is you take your broom, stick it in here, and friction holds it. And then just push it up, take it out. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. You can print pack out feet. Here's a pack out foot. So this slides into the pack out. I've got four of them. So now I can get a piece of wood here, make a workbench that I can pop on and off. And I even printed off a little clip so I can lock it in place. And I know Milwaukee makes that product. You can purchase it, but it's a lot cheaper to make your own and print your own feet. Here's something I printed. Don't know what this is. This was something I've actually wanted to buy for a couple of years. I'll show you what it is. It's a thumb clip for a Fuji X100 series camera. Take out this plug for the hot shoe, put this in like this. And now you've got extra grip. I seriously was gonna buy the one from Fuji. They make these out of aluminum. I printed this one off. I tried it out for a day and realized I hate it. I don't like that. I prefer to hold it just like that. So a couple cents in filament and I saved myself from buying one. 3D printers actually save you money. What else? What else have I been 3D printing? All kinds of knickknacks and doodads. And here's something, I, I need to mount this, but uh, one of my viewers gifted this to me several years ago. This is a bug assault. And so it is a little pump style air gun that shoots salt at flies. It's a lot of fun. So keep your kids entertained for hours, but where do you store it? Well, you store it wherever you want with this thing. You can just screw this to the wall, clicks right in, ready to go. Hide it under your desk at work. No one has to know you're killing flies. It also acts as a safety. You can't pump it when it's being hung. So that's, that's safe. Now, I'm not trying to spend your money, but I have always wondered, you know, somebody like me who likes making things, I've got skills, I've got tools, is a 3D printer a waste? No, I, I think it's actually quite valuable. And I'm actually realizing that the way I make things is changing. Little problems like, oh shoot, this doesn't quite fit. I'm always like, well, what if I could draw something that would make it fit? The software I'm using is the free version of Fusion 360. 
it's hard to find. Like when you look at their website, they've got the different pricing options and the free one isn't there. You have to scroll down to the bottom and it's been doing well. And then I've also paid for a one year subscription to a very expensive software called Shaper 3D. Let me show you that real quick. So I use it on the iPad. I also try it on my computer, but I prefer the iPad. Shaper 3D, we wanna make a hose adapter. So this is what it looks like. We're gonna draw on the top. Now let's just say we want the outside of our hose adapter to be two inches. So we're gonna sketch a circle. Pick it, drag it. Now we can enter in two inches, two, enter. Okay, there's our two inch circle. We want a three quarter inch hole in the middle there. So again, we're on the circle tool, go like this. And let's click on this, go 0.75. Now we've got a three quarter inch hole. Cool. We want this thing to be two inches. So we're gonna tap on this and simply extrude it. We can type in, no, extrude. And then we can just type this. We want two inches exactly, boom, done. There we go. Now we've got a cylinder that's two inches. But oh, you know what? We want this side chamfered. So just touch that chamfer it. Look, it looks like a nozzle for an air tool. Just like that, it's amazing. This side, we don't want to chamfer, we want to fill it. So touch this and fill it. If you pull that direction, it's a fillet. The other direction, it's a chamfer. Look at that, incredible. We've got our tool. I can literally export this, send it to my 3D printer and it will print this part to scale. Now if I want to see what it's going to look like, let's go to visualization. This software is amazing. Say if we wanted this manufactured in, well, carbon fiber, because it looks cool. Boom, there we have our part in carbon fiber. If you want to see what it would look like in the room, augmented reality, this is going to make you go like, whoa, what? Move iPad around to start, yeah, move, oh, it's on the table. There's our part. And actually it is scaled to the room. Kind of blows your mind, doesn't it? definitely blew mine. And that is literally how easy it is to design things with this software. Zoom in, zoom out. I could literally send this to somebody and have this manufactured right now. And even from here, this is a very, very simple part. I can add all the features I want. I could add threads. I could add holes at a different axis. I could, it's, it's mind blowing. And this isn't even a new iPad. This, this is an iPad Air. It's about three, four years old. Boom. It, it's crazy. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now again, I'm not trying to spend your money. I don't get anything if you buy a 3D printer, but I just really wanted to make this video from the approach that is 3D printing just something that 3D printing enthusiasts just get excited about because it's their thing? Like people get excited about collecting stamps or Pokemon? I think... Like myself, I'm, I'm not like a 3D printing enthusiast. Well, maybe I sort of am now, but for practical reasons, for some of the reasons that I've showed you and that I can solve problems very quickly with a very custom solution and it all happens like, like quick. And especially for things like uh, jigs, fixtures and organization. When I first got that machine, I, I'd kind of made up my goal to have that thing printing as much as possible. And I have printed a lot of organizing things, hooks, like, so this is a, a Ikea Scatus board and these are the metal hooks they sell for them. Problem with these is that they're not secured in there. So this was on Thingiverse and it's a 3D printed one. And because there's a little flex, you just kind of put it in there, bend it down like this, but now the hook itself doesn't come off the board. And it's just constant solutions like this that, that I'm just like, wow, this thing is incredible. Let alone you could start selling some of the things you make if you'd wanted to. But if you were wondering, like, I've, I've kind of been curious about a 3D printer, but I don't know for sure. I have found that it is worthwhile in my shop and I have found more uses for having a 3D printer than I ever thought I would. And if you kind of want to help yourself be convinced a little more, just go to Thingiverse and printables. Go to those websites, type something in, search for it. And you don't have to be a member. You don't have to pay. Everything is a free download. And boom, you will find things there that, that are solutions to problems you had. And it's just crazy. You know, think about GoPros, GoPro mounts, bicycle mounts, Garmin mounts, anything that has a mount. You can make your own custom cup holders for your vehicle iPhone cases, holders for your iPhone, camera holders. It's, it's insane. If you peruse those two websites, 
you could find months worth of projects that you would be printing and they would be solving your lives with customized solutions. Absolute blast. I'm so happy that I got this. And then this now is opening up other options like my sanding blocks. You know, I'm doing different prototypes, but I could send these out now that I have the 3D file and I wouldn't have drawn the 3D file if I didn't have a 3D printer. That was just kind of what took me down that road. I can actually get these manufactured on a CNC milling machine in aluminum now because I have the file. It's done. And once you start going down that road, I was giving myself a couple hours a day to fiddle with the drawing, fiddle with the, the printer. And then my goal in the beginning was to have that printer printing for like eight hours a day. My kids use the printer. They love the printer and it's it is actually a very useful tool and I'm at the point where I would say I would think it's almost an essential in a shop for the quick prototyping. Even if you're not making that, that final product out of plastic, if plastic isn't going to work, you can at least see if it fits inside of your project. You can print the part off. Yes, that's going to work great. Now I'll go ahead and machine this in aluminum or steel because I know that this is going to work the way I hoped it would and it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Anyways, this is just a public service announcement video. I thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Princess Auto, for sponsoring this video. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Cheers.